Hi guys, what's up? My name is not Andrew Kramer, but Rui Romano. And this is my second ever tutorial online, after the massive success of the, my first one, from the Domino tool. Here I am for a second one. And this is a beginner's level and beginner's tutorial. And I've decided to make it for Rama Deep shop let me just check the image and move it here okay so i was on facebook group from thinking particles i use it a lot great community i've learned a lot and i still learn a lot from all the gurus tp gurus like uh, fabian uh, ristovelev i don't know how to spell her their names but uh, eloy and so on really cool guys that are always ready to share knowledge and I feel the will to do the same now that I know a little bit more of TP. So Rama asked me, hey, asked not me but to the community of course, how to do an effect from Katy Perry, Roar, a simple effect, particles, finding a target. Okay, the video is uh, like this one, okay, we can see here. So the particles are flowing and finding a moving target. Cool enough. So let me show you a simple tutorial for beginners. And I've decided to show and use uh, some cool features from Thinking Particle 6 and you will see what they are and so I didn't have time to model a tiger for this tutorial so I modeled an elephant okay cool super elephant you can see it here it all starts with a teapot and then you have all the finer details made in ZBrush and so on really cool and of course I'm joking this is not a modeling tutorial it's just this target I found it funny because I was doing this and my little kids that has eight years old asked me, hey dad, well, what are you doing? And I said, I'm, I'm doing an elephant. And she, she was watching me and she said, no, you are not. You are doing a reverse teapot. <laughs> and I was laughing and so on. So let's start it. Start this tutorial and stop joking. So let's unhide TP. Cool and hide it let's put it here and oops okay hide the object and press play so let's see what we have here so a bunch of particles having this behavior that uh, it's uh, smoke group group behavior so it's kind of fluid effects smoke uh, finding a target and I'm going to explain how to do this simple effect and I'm going to show you two features one of, the, of two new features from Thinking Particle 6 one is the smoke solver and smoke group operator and the other one is the camera mapping uh, using memory and what memory does it just you can uh, choose a specific frame and make a camera map based on that specific frame and then the particles uh, assume that texture and then you can go to another point and they will stick with that frame in memory so yeah, I'm not an expert explaining things but I hope you understand a little bit so let's start the tutorial first first things first um, I didn't explain, but since this is a beginner's level, master system is where you create particles groups and uh, you give them names. So if uh, you can, for instance, okay, I'm going to name it smoke. And uh, then on the master dynamics, you have dynamic sets. There are the rules for those particles, where they are created, to where they are going, uh, if they are if they are fluids, if they are going to die, etc. So the rules are here and the groups 
of the particle the group names are here so you should uh, the first thing is to keep it organized uh, for this quick tutorial I didn't uh, bother much but uh, for complex model for complex systems you should really try to keep this organized so one month later or six months later you know <laughs> you open the file and you know what's there so uh, first thing my mouse uh, is moving fast on my tutorials sorry for that but I was a quick player and I, I, my, my sensitivity of the mouse is really high uh, nobody in the company can work on my workstation so but let's keep it on. Okay, position born. Uh, this is um, we are creating particles, and we have to say where do we want to create. And I've said in the position I want to create on the shape that is this circle here. And here we have a value zero to one, so it will fill. The whole circle if I put half of it and press play the particles will only fill half of it and if I press one the particles will fill on full circle here we have shape material that is the material uh, we want the particles to have well I made it just for this tutorial standard material with a JPEG from Dumbo here we have the shape of the particle, it's a sphere, and the size of it with the variation, if you want. So, afterwards, after generating, I'm going to say, yes, I want them to uh, be uh, have the behavior of smoke. And it's so simple as to create uh, two operators, smoke group and smoke solver if you don't create smoke solver it will not work so afterwards you have to the settings for for this so I'm going to show you let me just minimize I'm not used to work in one monitor but okay just for the tutorial and we have smoke solver and then we have to define which group will have will behave like smoke okay and then you have all these settings over here uh, I, I think they should be a little bit more organized, but that's my feeling. Like these cool tabs over here that I want to... I'm going to show you, for instance, one of the main advantages of using this smoke solver is that you can see in real time. And if you use few few particles, you really can see the effect in real time. Here, if I press play, yeah, it's not real time, but it's close. So let me just uh, change the atmospheric disturbance, for instance, for 5, a big value. Okay, so you can see it in real time, what this value does. Cool? So, okay, I will not explain um, all these settings, of course. You have the manual and you can read it and learn yourself this is a tutorial just to go and find the target so let's find the target cool and yeah don't be overwhelmed with this this is really simple it's a beginner one so what I've done it's I have my smoke group over here and I have to uh, find the target based on a distance and the distance between the smoke smoke group and the node elephant okay really simple you have this operator and why did I use this add multiply and floating and so on well I'm going to explain uh, if I disable this and I just say I want 10 radios so each time the particle reach this distance it will start this operator bring to it's, uh, you have many ways of uh, bringing particles to an object but I will show you with this one and bring to where? well to the elephant of course and you have to define the new position for the particle 
cool so let me show you what happens if this distance is 10 okay cool I press play and voila okay I only have some particles finding the target few and all the others are not so that's why I've created a value that is adding so it starts I'm going to explain so it all starts with this float its value of 1 so it's a small radius but then I'm adding a second value and this value is what its age of the particle so it's number 1 2 3 4 so you can for instance um, Mm, I will explain you, I use this a lot, but it's simple, you have the de debug log and the debug log, what does it, it gives you the value okay, so it's it's giving a lot of values, so for now it's like 4000 particles, let me just put four or 40 just for the, this tutorial each time I move um, we'll see the, the updated value for this, okay? So let me just show you here. So this value is always going up. And why this is zero? Because it's creating more particles at this specific frame. So, and we'll see it's increasing, okay? So I wanted this value to add this one but and why didn't I connect just the age to the value B okay because I'm going to write to debug log and remove this one okay so we have here value of 1 2 blah 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 and I thought this was really going fast so I didn't go I didn't want to go so fast the value of the radius so I've decided to divide it and divide it by a floating value that I found this to be interesting uh, for this tutorial of course so let me just close the debug and continue so really simple I'm adding a value to this so I don't have particles missing or floating in the air they will eventually find this radius because it's always increasing okay so let me just uh, sorry let me just put the particle numbers again to 4000 <clears throat> there are other ways to um, to make this uh, debugging but okay I'm going to go to the mapping of the particles okay and as you see this new operator uh, you have memory so it's like I said in the beginning you can map in a specific frame and then the texture will uh, assume that frame and if you reverse it the texture will continue uh, uh, with the, the particle so let me just uh, explain you I it's 269 the frame okay so TP is uh, computing all these frames so it, it takes a little bit let him just think for a while okay and I'm going to render a single frame for this tutorial I used uh, 4000 particles per second rate oh and another thing I forgot to say let me just show you while it's rendering um, let me just, okay it rendered 4000 particles and I forgot to tell you that the generate is only generating for 70 frames uh, because if I didn't have this it will continue to uh, emit particles without a stop so 
it's simple. You have position born, you have to make the input visible and with a condition you say that in frames from frames 0 to 70 it's on and then it will be off. Okay. Cool. So we have an elephant of course for this tutorial and to be in real time I've used the low count particles. Okay. But in the end, if I would do an effect like this, I would use like a hundred thousand and make cache and keep the particle size low. So if you want, for instance, to see a little bit better, uh, you go like, okay, just close this and change the size of the particle. I'm going to use a higher value, the sphere and render and okay it's much much bigger okay uh, let me just show you this of course um, another thing I, in the viewport I'm using um, uh, not showing the mesh because if I press show mesh it will be much lower because it's showing 4000 spheres flowing so I will keep this uh, off, okay? So you can see the difference. It's so, but when you render, of course, they are generated uh, in the render time. Cool. And in, let me just go a little bit further and render again. Okay, so this is it, my second tutorial for beginners level. I hope you like it, and I will uh, share the file with you in my Dropbox, and see you next time. Bye-bye.